Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's been a couple of weeks uh, since my last video. I've been uh, preparing a whole series on how to create theater masks. Um, it was probably my first video ever posted on my channel what about three four years ago um, you know during uh, lockdown and pandemic uh, and it's been the most popular uh, video on my channel uh, it gets a couple of dozen views almost every day uh, so I'll uh, I back for popular demand uh, I'm gonna create a whole series of how to make a uh, theater mess. It's my first love, um, is theater uh, rather than fine arts, uh, and uh, I would love to uh, share this with you. Uh, so I've been using just white neutral masks that you can find in any craft store. Um, it's decently strong uh, and uh, it'll hold its shape if you don't um, uh, force it too much. Uh, after that, it's just a Crayola Model Magic. Model Magic is great uh, because it is quite lightweight and it uh, dries uh, decently uh, uh, strong uh, and it says it doesn't crack but it does does crack a little bit. Um, I find um, wait for it a day later uh, and then put a little bit of model magic over the cracks. Uh, you can't put it on too too thin um, but you can put it on you know decently thin uh, so it stays light. Um, it is really really important to make sure that these masks stay light uh, so they don't weigh down on your actors faces. Uh, but it does hold its shape really well uh, in terms of getting some emotion onto your faces. Uh, so some of my first steps were to just cover the whole mask um, in Model Magic to have a nice a thin base coat. Uh, and then after that, you just uh, start adding your facial features. Uh, I usually start from the forehead and go my, uh, make my way down. Uh, so all the wrinkles and, uh, and the crevices of your forehead uh, and so on. My theme for this particular mask, as I just didn't say, was uh, um, Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars. Uh, so you're going to see uh, at the beginning of the video a really cool image of it. With the, I had a, um, my phone flashlight uh, shining up. I created a little cloak um, hood. Um, out of velvet uh, for uh, the costume uh, and I put it on a, a styrofoam head for display. Uh, so uh, right now in the video I've worked my way down to the mouth um, and um, to have some sort of facial expression. Uh, so you can use a few carving tools uh, for this project uh, but you know what uh, popsicle sticks uh, work really well too, uh, and obviously super cheap, uh, and especially if you have a, a class um, of students, uh, they could use popsicle sticks for any sort of carving. Uh, so I had the forehead finish uh, at the top, uh, center, um, uh, Emperor Palpatine's uh, forehead is all bumpy and crevicey, uh, so I made sure uh, the Model Magic uh, held its shape. Uh, and quite frankly, all you have to do is use your thumbs and your fingers uh, to create any sort of um, uh, crevice and emotion uh, and bump on your mask. Uh, so after that, I did the cheeks and the cheekbones and all the wrinkles and the crevices and uh, the waves uh, that go up and down the uh, cheekbones uh, for Blow's eyes. Uh, to obviously show his age, uh, which is who knows how many hundreds of years. And then um, his chin, uh, the dimple down uh, on his chin, and then using the carving tool for the dimple below his uh, nose and so on and so forth. And to make sure uh, his, uh, the expression that I have on Senator Palpatine's face is uh, just this um, scowl uh, I guess it's not a uh, it's definitely not a smile and of any sort I just wanted that neutral um, uh, expression on his mouth. 
Uh, so after that, it's just using the carving tool to make sure that the crevices are really nice and deep uh, and defined. Uh, after uh, I'm finished with that, I'll be painting the light and shadow. Uh, so I'll be using uh, dark blues uh, and blacks uh, below uh, the crevices to make sure uh, that they show up. Uh, especially on stage. Um, a lot of the times I tell my students to make sure that you're playing with exaggeration. Um, a lot of the times these theater masks are seen from 25 to 100 feet away. So you gotta make sure that the facial features are a little bit exaggerated uh, or they'll never appear uh, on stage uh, no matter how much uh, lighting there is. Uh, so there's that. So I'm almost finished making sure that the facial features are well carved uh, and deep. Uh, and a lot of the times, uh, if you want to make sure that your clay is thick enough, you can just use your cover tool and carve out some of your crevices uh, and your wrinkles uh, for your character. Uh, right now, uh, before that, I just put down a, a white paint base coat. Um, the paint, uh, the acrylic paint that I used, actually acts as a really nice seal uh, for your model magic. I find if you paint it before it's quite dry, um, it does seal it and it doesn't crack as much, um, in my experience. I find if you let it air dry, um, it does crack. Um, if you let it dry slowly in, say, a Ziploc bag, um, it doesn't crack as much. I find if you uh, play with it, sculpt it, and let it air dry just alone on your countertop maybe, uh, it does crack a little bit overnight. So if you let it dry slowly or paint it right away as soon as you're finished, um, it doesn't crack as much as it could. Uh, so a little bit of a uh, couple of tips and tricks that I've come across. I've used this um, I've used this material quite a bit with my students and they do love it uh, because it, it's not very oily. Uh, it doesn't get on your hands as much um, as say uh, air dry uh, modeling clay or uh, oil based mo modeling clay. It gets your uh, your hands a little bit greasy, but model magic actually doesn't. So I have my students really like it a little bit more than modeling clay. Um, so after this, it is just texturing, texturing, texturing. Um, so, uh, Emperor Palpatine um, has this grayish gray uh, complexion. Uh, so I started with the whites and then I put a little bit of uh, beige um, down on the face. Uh, and then after that, um, the third coat of paint is this, you know, sort of a yucky gray um, because uh, the emperor's skin is actually quite dry um, and, you know, quite sickly. Um, so after you get your base coats down, uh, you're going to start some light and shadow. Uh, thin brush. Um, I actually uh, don't love using black because it's really quite uh, intense color. Uh, so like a dark blue uh, and browns uh, and grays uh, in the crevice, you could obviously experiment. Uh, but I, you know, a lot of the times I teach my students, um, you know, light and shadow is not always black. Um, I find under lights, uh, especially for a theater mask and a little bit further away, you know, deep blues uh, work really well for light and shadow. Uh, so thin brush underneath all the wrinkles and the cracks and crevices um, have been, you know, worked really well for this project. Uh, and a little bit of patience, that sort of thing. After that, it is um, some highlights uh, underneath um, the nose, underneath the cheeks, uh, and definitely around the eyes and the forehead uh, seem to have, I looked at a few reference photos uh, online of uh, the original Return of the Jedi um, uh, Emperor, and uh, he had this really uh, defined line down his uh, forehead, uh, and quite a bumpy forehead too, sort of like Alien uh, actually, uh, so I tried to portray that in this um, 
in this video. So moving on, uh, some of the uh, highlights after you get the skin tone just right. Um, he had a lot of yellow uh, and orange around the eyes uh, and a little bit underneath the nose uh, and his lips uh, had this um, pinkish yellowish uh, tone to it as well. Uh, very distinct to the character. Uh, and the makeup job uh, that they did during the original uh, Return of the Jedi um, movie. So after that, um, I just um, experimented a little bit with some light and shadow, uh, and uh, I would my advice for the paint because I made a few mistakes along my process is to make sure that you keep track of how you're mixing your paint, uh, what you're using, and what combination you are doing. It is very hard to reproduce uh, exactly um, the, the right uh, temperature, uh, color temperature of each of your paints. So I would do it in one sitting, don't come back to it, and uh, so you could uh, keep track of what paints and what shades and what colors you are using. Uh, so uh, it was a bit of a trial and error uh, to make sure that all the tones uh, of the skin uh, were accurate uh, and uh, even throughout your project. So I'm almost coming to an end. Um, uh, in the display that um, I'm using, um, I used uh, some uh, doll eyes that I sent away for. Uh, so you'll see that on the uh, styrofoam head. And then there you go, you got the cloak, you got the lights um, to have a fantastic display. So keep safe, keep creating everybody.